In this video, we will provide an overview and discuss the options for configuring disaster recovery connectivity. The Acronis Cyber Disaster Recovery Cloud allows you to define the connectivity type to the cloud site. There are three options here. The point to site connection is a secure connection from the outside by using your endpoint devices, such as a desktop or laptop, to the cloud and local sites via a VPN. This type of connection can be used for scenarios such as when corporate services and web resources are available only from the corporate network. The point to site connection allows you to securely connect to the local site. Or, in case of a disaster, when a workload gets switched to the cloud site and your local network is down, you may need direct access to your cloud server. This type of connection requires VPN appliance to be deployed to your local site. You will need to install this VPN appliance on your local site, configure the site-to-site -site connection, and then the point-to-site -site connection to the local site. You will need to make sure that a user who needs to establish the point-to-site -site connection to your local site has a user account in Acrona Cyber Cloud, and they have a company administrator or cyber protection user role. These credentials are used for authentication to the VPN client. We provide the open VPN client. If you enable two-factor authentication for your account, you will need to regenerate the configuration file created and renew it for any existing OpenVPN clients. Users will need to re-log in to the Acrona Cyber Cloud to set up two-factor authentication for their accounts. Another reason to regenerate the configuration is if you suspect a configuration file was compromised. If you update the configuration file, the old configurations, of course, do not work. You need to make sure to distribute the new file among users who are allowed to use the point-to-site connection. Whenever you have the VPN appliance, regardless which method, the requirements for the VPN appliance are that you need at least one CPU, one gig of RAM, and eight gigabyte of disk space. Additionally, ports that need to be open are TCP443 outbound for the VPN connection, and TCP80 outbound for automatic update of the appliance. Please ensure that your firewalls and other components of your network security system allow connections through these ports to any IP address. The second is site-to-site -site VPN connection. The site-to-site -site connection is a connection extending the local network to the cloud via a secure VPN tunnel. This type of connection requires a VPN appliance deployed on your local site. Your local site is connected to the cloud site by means of this secure VPN tunnel. This type of connection is suitable in case you have tightly dependent servers on a local site, such as a web server and a database server. In case of a partial failover, when one of these servers is recreated on the cloud site while the other stays on the local site, they will still be able to communicate with each other via the VPN tunnel. To establish a site-to-site -site connection between the local and cloud sites, a VPN appliance and VPN gateway are used. When you start configuring the site-to-site -site connection in the console, the VPN gateway is automatically deployed in the cloud site. Then you must deploy the VPN appliance on your local site, add the networks to be protected, and register the appliance in the cloud. A Cronus Cyber Disaster Recovery Cloud creates a replica of your network in the cloud. A secure VPN tunnel is established between the VPN appliance and the VPN gateway. It provides your local network extension to the cloud. The production networks in the cloud are bridged with your local networks. The local and cloud servers can communicate via this VPN tunnel as if they are all on the same Ethernet segment. Routing is performed with your local router. For each source machine to be protected, you must create a recovery server on the cloud site. It will need to be in the standby state until a failover event happens. If a disaster happens and you start a failover process in the production mode, the recovery server representing the exact copy of your protected machine is launched in the cloud. It may be assigned the same IP address as the source machine has and launched in the same Ethernet segment. You can continue working with the server without noticing any background changes. The final method is cloud only. The cloud only mode does not require VPN appliance deployment on your local site. It implies that you have two independent networks, one on the local site, 
another on the cloud site. Routing is performed with the router on the cloud site. Cloud servers on the cloud site are accessible through the point to site VPN and public IP addresses if assigned. You can have up to five networks in the cloud. You cannot delete a cloud network if there is at least one cloud server in it. You will need to first delete the cloud server and then delete the network. As a result, the VPN gateway and cloud network with the defined address and mask will be deployed on the cloud site.